So let's suppose that resources were not a constraint. Imagine you had, I don't know, I'll just make up a number, like a $100,000 budget to equip yourself with new resources, tools, teammates, to teach in a new way. What would you do? How would your course change if you had a big pile of resources? Um, I mean, obviously, you know, support in terms of grading help is a big deal. And I am quite fortunate at Waterloo that we do get quite a bit of uh, graduate TA support for our courses. And something that I, um, I was really pushing when I was uh, teaching online was that the TAs needed to provide really detailed feedback. Because sometimes, even when using CrowdMark, because it can be so fast, it's just score, enter, score, enter, score, enter. And I, um, I discussed with my TAs up front, like, I don't want you doing that because these students are not getting any face-to-face. -face, I feel like this is the place where we really need to give them feedback. So I would set up the comment library in advance just to try to, to you know have it there in their face so they could see all you got to do is just drag these in and then create some new ones as it comes up so um but yeah some support for doing things like that obviously more graders make it go faster and allow you to provide even more detailed feedback there's a famous uh, study in education that's been reproduced many times that was, I think, first done by Black and William, which was called Inside the Black Box. And so the, the study goes like this. You've got, say, three random groups of students. Jana will probably correct me on my stats here, but I'll, I'll say some anyway. So three random groups of students. One gets scores alone. One gets feedback, comments alone. And the third group gets both. And then you track these students over a series of assessments. And then at the end, you give them a summative assessment to see which cohort learned the most. And it is uniformly uh, found that the students that receive feedback alone and no scores outperform the other two cohorts. Because you can imagine what the student does, you know, 79, ugh, or 79 and all this red ink. I'm not going to read that. Or wait, what's my score? I'm gonna read through everything. And so the student engages differently. So I quite like the way that you revolved around feedback. So what about you, Jana? Would you, uh, how would you spend resources to improve your instruction? And what do you think you would achieve with those resources that you can't achieve now because of the constraints? Well, I think, because I had the advantage of thinking while you were answering Fiona, I was thinking of if I had kind of the, the army of graduate students available to me, what I would love is if right, um, you're often trying to get students to, to work together and talk together, if they had a graduate student mentor that maybe the group was meeting together and talking with, because I've often thought kind of oral exams would be really useful and nice uh, in teaching a math class because then you could give a hint for the person who gets stuck on a little bit here and, and really see where are they, what's the problem, what do they know, what do they need a little help with, uh, downside of that is, well, it takes too long if you have 150 students, uh, and it's incredibly intimidating if nobody's ever done an oral exam before. Math is not the place that you want to be the first one saying, oh yeah, we're doing oral exams in your calculus class. Uh, but if you could have that kind of check in where they're having that conversation and have somebody that they know, then that would be, that would be really nice. It'd be great to teach a class where you get it a little bit when you happen to have a nice smaller class where you're actually getting more of that immediate feedback. But in your big classes, if we could break it down and have the, okay, you meet your, you have your group work, you need to get this much done and then meet with your mentor on Tuesday. That would be wonderful. 